Governor Abbott declares that Texas is under invasion as he battles the feds over who has authority at the border. But does that statement stack up with the reality of the situation along the Rio Grande? We've pulled bodies out of the river of young kids, um, you know, men, women, and children. People putting themselves and their kids' lives at risk uh, should not be a normal thing. We join a patrol along the border, what our cameras caught, and the message officers are hoping to send to policymakers in Austin and Washington. He voted to acquit Ken Paxton, but now a Texas state senator wants lawmakers to take a new look at impeachment. Why the AG's move to end a whistleblower lawsuit has one Republican ready to reconsider his vote. A wet week in Texas, but while the creeks are flowing, the state still faces water worries. We dig into the efforts underway to make sure we have the supply to meet our growing needs. Produced from the Capitol in Austin and airing statewide, this is the award-winning State of Texas. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Josh Hinkle. The Supreme Court on Monday said that Border Patrol can remove razor wire placed along part of the Rio Grande as part of the state's Operation Lone Star. It's part of an ongoing battle between the state and federal government over who has authority to enforce immigration law. But the high court's position has not settled the fight. Governor Greg Abbott said the legal battle is not over and he refused to allow Border Patrol to access a park in Eagle Pass at the center of the dispute. The Supreme Court's order addressed just one aspect of a larger case still before the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. Oral arguments in that case are scheduled for February 7th. Abbott maintains that keeping the wire in place is essential to protect Texans from what he has previously called an invasion at the border. The governor issued a statement citing articles the U.S. Constitution, he says, give states the right to defend against invasion. That authority is the supreme law of the land and supersedes any federal statutes to the contrary. Abbott said adding the Texas National Guard, DPS, and other Texas personnel are acting on that authority to secure the border. Amid the ongoing political fight, lawmakers from Washington are heading to the border to see the situation for themselves. Our politics team joined a bipartisan congressional group that traveled to the Rio Grande Valley. Our Monica Madden joined a night patrol along the border and saw the contrast between humanitarian needs and political reality. I mean, we care about what goes on. The, the reason we're so uh, adamant that it needs to stop is the, the amount of suffering that we see. Chris Cabrera has been a Border Patrol agent for 22 years. He says his job has never been more challenging than it is today. It's changed dramatically. And it's felt by many on the job. We're losing agents faster than, than we can replace them. Over the course of two days, Cabrera gave us a tour along the border, showing us holes in fences where they'll find human smugglers. We're not picking up much. And at night, we staked out the wall. And you can see the wall behind me. We're getting a tour from Border Patrol agents where they tell us that most nights they are outnumbered by the amount of migrants, sometimes hundreds at a time, trying to climb the wall. We spotted a group of 22 migrants, including unaccompanied children and a baby. It's very dangerous to, to, to come across that river, much less to be a, a small child. They turned themselves into federal authorities. And they'll start their processing. All of them are claiming asylum as of now. And loaded a bus. Here, people know that if they come in, they say a, a few magic keywords that we're going to release them into the country with a court date five years away, and nobody's really going to look for them if they don't show up. Cabrera doesn't blame groups like we saw, but the policies. It's easier to get into this country illegally than it is to get in here legally. So, of course, they're going to take advantage of that. We are witnessing a human tragedy. That was part of why we went on this trip. To tag along with a bipartisan group of Texas congressional members. They're hoping to bring back solutions to a gridlocked Washington. The Senate bill, if it's done bipartisan, will have a chance. Tackling immigration policy historically has been a Herculean task, especially with a Congress that has been marred by chaos. All agree. But Congressman Michael McCall says the state of negotiations are different now, with foreign aid on the line. It's a national security supplemental, so I think we've got the leverage and possibly the best opportunity to get something serious done. Moderate Democrats like Congressman Henry Cuellar can agree with some Republican-led proposals to toughen the process for claiming asylum. This bipartisan type of work will get the job done. 
But it's not likely that the Senate will take the House border deal as is, which many Republicans are demanding. We need the Senate to pick up our plan or come up with a solution so we can have a path forward. Agents like Cabrera just want lawmakers to see it the way he does. It's not a Republican or Democrat issue, it's a, it's a humanitarian issue. Monica Madden, State of Texas. You heard both Congressman Cuellar and Congressman McCall express optimism about a deal tying aid to Ukraine to new restrictions on asylum seekers. Things have changed since those interviews. On Friday, House Speaker Mike Johnson declared that deal dead on arrival. Johnson says Republicans will push for a package of border reforms that previously failed to win support in the Senate, setting the stage for an election year stalemate. LGBTQ advocacy groups fought new Texas laws at the Capitol and in the courts. Now they're trying something different. Why they're asking the United Nations to get involved. Plus, he's not on the ballot, but Ken Paxton is busy campaigning. His message to voters as he works to push out lawmakers who supported impeachment. After a rainy week, it can be easy to forget Texas is still short on water but there's a billion dollar effort to fix the problem. What's underway now to boost the state's supply? 